Dear citizens, Dear citizens, I will give you the latest uh, release the latest regarding, the regarding the fight against COVID-19. And we'll update you on the REC Center in the context of establishing the 2021 budget. As you must be well aware by now, the COVID-19 pandemic has a strong grip on the country. And for the past few weeks, its effects have been particularly severe in Alberta and even sorely taxing our hospitals and medical personnel at all levels due to increased hospitalizations. In our health zones, we now have 43 active cases, including on a reserve, in town, and in a county of Galveston. Since my last release, we have added one more fatality due to COVID. Our sincere condolences to the family in mourning. With numbers on the rise, Every day, we all become more vulnerable to catching the virus. We need to consciously protect ourselves, our family, our friends, our community, our province, by following AHS guidelines, wearing a mask, keeping our distances, and washing or sanitizing our hands often. To all those in our health zone who are sick and suffering, who are in quarantine, we wish you a speedy recovery and safe return to your activities. On December 8, 2020, in consequence of the serious states of the pandemic in Alberta, and under the advice of Dr. Dina Henshaw, Premier Jason Kenney has now declared a state of public health emergency and impose new stringent rules for the next four weeks to protect the healthcare system from COVID-19. Be aware that this means that RCMP and town peace officers now have the powers to find those not willing to abide by the new regulations. Let us review the rules most applicable to our Calston community. As of Tuesday, December 8th, one, mandatory mask wearing when in all public indoor places, including workplaces. Two, all indoor or outdoor social gatherings are prohibited. In addition, and starting this Sunday, December 13, we need to do the following. One, work from home measure unless an employer determines work requires a physical presence for effectiveness. Our town staff will be limited to a core crew to provide essential services to the public. Two, reduction of attendance in all business establishments to 15% of building fire code capacity. This means that you will need to arm yourself with much patience and understanding when going to a store. It is a time to support the local merchants who do their best to keep their businesses open for our shopping enjoyment. And so wear your mask. Three, no in-person dining. Restaurants can only offer takeout services, curbside pickup, and deliveries. Four, closing of all recreational centers, including indoor recreation facilities such as the ice arena, the gym, and fitness centers. Five, closing of our library and closing of our museum in town. Six, closing of businesses specializing in personal and wellness services, including hair and nail salon and massage businesses. And here are the new rules that will affect us all most directly in our homes and families. One, no house gathering beyond those living currently under your roof, except for the addition of those students studying out of town and for whom your house is their principal place of residence. Two, students studying out of country and coming back home must follow the border testing 
pilot program, including quarantine protocol and testing for COVID-19 as per AHS guidelines. Three, if you live alone or if you are a single parent with children under 18, you are allowed the two same contacts to visit your home throughout the duration of the restriction, beyond the normal help you receive from a caregiver or repair worker. This next regulation is going to be very hard on many families in town who look with anticipation for the visit of loved ones other than students at Christmas. So number four is addresses the out-of-town visitors. They cannot stay in other people's home while the restrictions are in place, regardless of where they're coming from or how closely related they are to you. So as an example, and to make it clear, if you have grown-up friends or children and their families who want to come to visit for Christmas, it should not happen, as disheartening as it may be. Vice versa, if you planned on visiting someone for Christmas, it should not happen either. Mr. Kenny commented, while we appreciate this may affect your travel plans, as you may wish to visit or stay with family, the increase in COVID cases is being taken very seriously, and these enhanced public health measures are required to stop the spread of COVID-19. Five, weddings and funerals must be held in a public place with a maximum of 10 people and no reception. Please refer to the alberta.ca site for full details. Six, faith services are limited to 15% of fire code occupancy for in-person attendance with physical distancing between household and mandatory mask use. Here again, much detail uh, are offered on the alberta.ca site. Seven, unnecessary travels out of town is discouraged to stop inter-community transmission. So if you are planning ski trips, check with the operator before leaving town. For more details, please refer to the alberta.ca website regarding enhanced public health measures. These decisions will be respected by many who want to be part of the solution to curb the fast COVID moving wave, but may also be met with defiance by those who feel their liberties are being jeopardized. Having lived in France through May 1968 and its aftermath, I personally know what it means to lose your freedoms and liberty. These events are etched in my memory, and I was glad to adopt Canada as my new home. But when I took my oath to become a Canadian citizen, I understood and accepted that having freedoms and rights also meant that I had to assume some responsibility and do my part. At this difficult time in our history, what governments at all levels are asking of us is simply to assume some collective responsibilities as citizens for the common good of our nation because of a pandemic that is not only threatening lives, but with it the entire economy, if not seriously curtailed. How many generations down the line will look back with great sadness at the 2020 pandemic and wonder why they have to bear the emotional and heavy fiscal burden brought in by the less than careful actions of their forebearers during the COVID-19 pandemic. We need to think of them, unite now as citizens to win, win this COVID battle, give hope to our children, and do the right thing now. The, fa the faster we all assume our responsibilities, 
to flatten the curve to protect our elders and elderly the fa and the vulnerable also, the fa faster we will all return to our normal lives. Yes, a vaccine is coming, and that is a bright light shining in our dark, wintry pandemic night. But it will still take some time before we can all start to feel safe again and resume our gathering and celebrations. As difficult and painful as it may be, we need to search our conscience and even if reluctantly follow the new rules for the common good. Christmas 2020 will be seared in our collective memories as one when we could not gather with our children or grandchildren and their families, a time when friends could not be welcome into our homes. Let us make every effort possible with the aid of technology to still reach out to our loved ones and friends, the lonely and the shut -ins. They need to hear our voices. It will comfort them. It will ease their loneliness and distress. Let us give them hope and let them know that they are not forgotten. For some who have lost a loved one or who have an ailing member of the family or friend, the days ahead with the new restrictions may be very difficult for you. Our hearts are troubled by the pains you have to endure at this time. Our prayers are with you and for you. But let us all look forward with the brightness of hope to a better and brighter year ahead. United, we can and we will. Now let me address another topic, the second topic mentioned at the beginning, the update on the rec center. In my last video release, I indicated that Council had approved in principle a million dollars towards a potential recreation facility in the upcoming 2021 capital budget. After some deliberations, Council unanimously decided on December 8, 2020 to adopt an interim budget rather than to approve the proposed three-year operational and five-year capital budget. Here is a rationale that guided this decision. Council felt that there were too many unknown to approve the 2021 and subsequent budget. The total cost of the rec center is still unknown, and the pulling cannot be done until we fully understand the rec center tax impact on the operational budget. The province has intimated that transfers to the municipalities would be severely reduced in 2022 and possibly very slim or inexistent in 2023. New policing costs for municipalities under 5,000, like ours, will go up significantly over the next three years and beyond. As council, we need more certainty in all these facts before passing the budgets. We hope to do so at the latest by March 31st, 2021, prior to the start of our discussions on the mill rate. An interim budget simply means that we will function with our current 2020 operational budget, but that we will not allow for capital expenditures on the, until the new budget is passed. If an emergency occurred requiring funding, Council will approve the use of reserves, so the town will continue to function as normal. At this time, my message will be simple. Stay healthy, be kind, and stay safe. And to all, amidst the pandemic, a Merry Christmas.